Let me give you one more vignette as well, and then uh, we're going to stop here in a few minutes. And, and this is this kind of thing is not unusual. Let's say there's a woman who is uh, 85 years old, and she's in a nursing home. Uh, following a, a hip fracture. She's recovering from surgery for a fractured hip. She's 85 years old. She's going to have to be there for a while. And let's say that in her history, when she was 15 years old, she was raped. And it was horrific. But in her own way, she was able to move, move beyond that experience, get on track, and basically live her life. And let's say, again, that uh, you know, some people could remember this for all their life, but a lot of people, with the passage of time, it becomes a bad memory, and they just don't think about it, because it, it's back there, okay? So that was 70 years ago that this happened, and she didn't think about it at all, okay? But she's in this nursing home, convalescent hospital, and because she's recovering from surgery for hip fracture, she can't get around very easily, and she needs help going to the bathroom, but several times a day, she'll wet her pants and she's wearing uh, diapers, wearing depends. And so the, the nursing staff has to come in and, uh, and you know, help her get out of her, her depends. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, so it's okay. I mean, she understands that. I mean, she's not even embarrassed. It's like, well, that, you know, this, this happens. And, and she's there for, let's say she's there for a week. And the person comes in, the same person every day and changes her diaper. She comes in one day, starts to change her diaper, and it's, 85-year-old woman starts freaking out. She has this huge anxiety attack. And people are like, what's, what's the matter? What's the matter? I don't know. I don't know. And and because she, she doesn't know. What may be happening is she is not moving around. Remember, you move around keeps serotonin levels up, right? She's powerless. Gosh, that has something to do with this. Try spending a week or two in a hospital or a nursing home and see what it's like to feel powerless. Some of these events have probably led to a place where there's more vulnerability, and now what's happening is pattern recognition. Somebody is doing something down there. Her amygdala is, is making the connection, even though she, consciously she doesn't know what. And they say, what's the matter with you? She goes, I don't know, I don't know. And guess what's going to happen? She's going to get a shot of Haldol or something just to calm her down because, yeah, she's freaking out. She might be going crazy or something. Another example of how powerful uh, those kind of unconscious processing can lead to something like that. But let me mention one, one last thing before we stop. These are, these are you know, rich and maybe somewhat extreme clinical examples, but things happen all the time for people uh, in somewhat less traumatic fashion. And, and let's say they, they just had a lot, there was a lot of uh, uh, anger and you know, a lot of uh, domestic violence when you're growing up, that sort of thing. And a person has come to associate kind of getting close to somebody as, as being potentially dangerous. So this person comes in to the therapist and says, look, there's something wrong with me because I'm 30 years old and you know, all my friends are married or they're in a committed relationship and I'm not. And, and, and I'm lonely, and it, it, but I feel like I'm going nuts because guess what? I've gone out with several different guys, and you know, one of them was a jerk. The other two, two guys, they were okay. I mean, nothing wrong. They were nice, nice men. But I see them two or three times, and I start feeling just uneasy. And then I just they call me up for days. Nah, I can't go, and I break it off. See, I must be going nuts. Well, it may be that what's happening is her amygdala's really imprinted a lot of the potential uh, violence, the instability, the unpredictability about people getting close to each other, okay? and it's, it is driving her behavior of backing off from relationships. And consciously, she's not making the connection, but she's been driven by this intense unconscious processing, and her conscious mind says, I must be nuts because I'm lonely. Why don't I keep in these relationships? And that's why she's in therapy. Make sense? And it's probably another reason why a lot of people come into therapy and they're depressed or they're anxious. And we might ask them, why do you think, uh, why do you think you're experiencing this? And, and lots of times people know, okay. But there's some times where people go, I don't know. It seems crazy to me. Well, it may be that with time you start to make some connections and understand what's going on. And this last slide I'll put it up here is from... Uh, Margaret Mahler, who was an object relations ther therapist, and she t says that these kinds of events and how they have an impact on someone's life, they're unrememberable yet unforgettable. Can't make that conscious connection, but they, it's powerful in its influence on a person. 
And so I, to close, I, I think it's interesting to think about this. You can look at it from a psychodynamic perspective, but also from a neurobiological perspective.